Happy Sunday morning, everybody. I'm Bobby Burton. That big smile to your right or my right is uh, Rod Babers. Rod, how you doing this morning, buddy? I'm doing great, man. I'm excited. Uh, talking football always puts me in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that on a Sunday. Hey, Rod, I want to get with you, and we're going to talk. We took on the offensive uh, grades for the season last week, uh, yesterday, excuse me. I want to take on the defensive grades today. Um, and you know what? I want to start – with a positive. So let's just get this <laughs> out of the way. Defensive tackle. Oh, man. If Texas anything but an A++, I, I don't know if if any of us belong to be on a YouTube channel covering Texas football. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> a++, bud. I mean, how else, what else do you end up with? You know, there are some of the some some teachers they they refuse to give a perfect grade, even if you are, I mean, you you had a perfect grade, they're not gonna give it to you. Um, I'm a, man, I'm pretty close to giving those D tackles a perfect grade between Sweat and Murphy. Uh, they are the best D tackle duo in the country. Uh, Pro Football Focus both has them great as top 10 D tackles. You can look at Devondre Sweat. He uh, his, he had a 92 run defense grade by Pro Football Focus this year, led all interior defense alignment. 15 tackles for loss or no gain. That was second among interior D linemen. And he was a uh, 10th in pass rush win rate at that position, 14.2%. He was an absolute free. But Byron Murphy, he also, how about this, 92 pro football focus run grade. So both of these guys had 92 pro football focus run grades. So you had elite run defenders. Makes sense as to why you had a top five rush defense. Uh, they He also, Byron Murphy, led all FBS interior defense alignment. Uh, and uh, his, his 15 tackles for loss and no game were tied for second. So you talk about both of these guys, man. Both of these guys were performing at an elite level. Both of them. Tavondre Sweat won the outland, but they're both considered top 10 D tackles in the country. Yeah, man. A plus plus best rush defense Texas had in probably since the 2009 defense in 15 years. Uh, that was a that was a, a quite the showing and a breakout campaign by those guys. And but he got the best D tackle coach in the country, interior D tackle coach in the country, coaching him in Bo Davis. Yep. Hey, I want to add this good backups this year, too. There, True, there yeah. wasn't this huge drive. Now, granted, there was a drop off, but that, that's always going to be the case. It was not a huge drop off, in my opinion, for the Longhorns. Alfred mm -hmm. Collins, Ver Vernon Broughton took a big step uh, forward uh, this year. Trill Carter got some time. Of course, he's in the portal. Uh, also, you got to look at the uh, guys like uh, uh, Aaron Bryant, uh, who ended up making, making a little bit of a hay. There as well, Jare Bledsoe. Uh, I think that the overall, though, the story of the defensive tackle is an Outland Award winner and a possibly a first round pick, and they can be two separate people at the same position. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a great playing a lot. Wow. You know yep. what I mean? That's, that really is because Murphy. Some people have going ahead of Sweat in the NFL draft. So just wow. Just keep yeah, the CBS had Murphy thirty two overall in the first round. And did not and, have and I can see that because he's a better pass rushing uh, defensive tackle than Tavondre Sweat even is, and it's not like he's a scrub against the run. He's an actual, he's an asset against the run too. Both of those guys, man, I can't, I can't wait to see where they get drafted. Best D tackle duo Texas had since Casey Hampton and Sean Rogers. They're not better than that too. Those, are, those two are the greatest. But this is, they might be talking about the second greatest D tackle duo in Texas football history. Yeah, I, I, I recall uh, somebody sitting there watching. I was told somebody was watching Texas and Washington from last year, the game from last year, yeah. uh, this year for their Pac-12 game uh, mm -hmm. with uh, with with uh, Washington. They they said they couldn't take their eyes off the Texas defensive tackles. <laughs> and that was he said that was a year ago. What are they going to look? What do they look like this year? So anyway, <laughs> be, be thinking about that. That's that's good stuff. They deserve all accolades they get. Right? Yes, sir. All accolades yep. they get. Uh, that. Three yards per carry or 2.9 yards per carry they allowed. Uh, let, let's go to a couple others that are a little bit more, I don't want to say contentious, but a little bit more debatable. Yeah. Uh, let's start with Edge. Uh, Barrett Sorrell uh, returned as a starter. Ethan Burke uh, got his time. He set out a game or a, a game for full game for injury, but came back within two games. I thought he uh, had a breakout year of sorts. Mm -hmm. uh, Barrett Sorrell was solid. Uh, Justice Finkley was a real big piece to the defensive puzzle as well. Uh, but it wasn't an overwhelming unit like that defensive tackle room, just a solid one. What did, what did you give these guys as a grade? Uh, actually, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I thought that they actually exceeded my expectation. Remember going into the season, guys, we thought 
you know, that defense, that, that edge position opposite Baron Sorrell was going to be a liability. We just didn't know who was going to occupy it. It was a open, open competition. Um, you know, uh, Ethan Burke wins it. Uh, what did call, what did start calling the mechanic? He had that yep. mechanic. Like, and honestly, I didn't like the nickname. Watching them play, I get it. I do get it. It's a workmanlike blue collar attitude towards it, and I think that's what Sark liked about him. But anyway, I digress. Um, it wasn't a liability. Those, actually, I thought both of those uh, guys played really well. Baron Sorrell, I saw a prog- I saw a development. I saw him evolve, uh, getting some, trying to get some pass rushing moves. I think that's going to be the biggest step for him uh, and try to become more of a uh, more of a high level pass rusher. But I think as a run stopper, I think he's actually really good. I think Ethan Burke actually has natural pass rushing ability. Um, I gave him a B, just a B overall, because um, I actually thought they exceeded my expectations in some ways. But they get a B because I still think pass rushing, pass rushing ability on the edge is something Texas does not necessarily have. Um, they, I think they're getting better with that. I think Ethan Burke will get better with it. They will put Anthony Hill on the edge at times, which they did this year. Uh, having a Colin Simmons and, and bringing in that, that's why they're bringing in a Colin Simmons, that's why they're uh bringing in different guys via the transfer portal to make sure that they can have better presence on the edge. So I gave him a, a B, got it. I gave him a B minus just yeah. because I, I felt like now. Granted, there were a couple games where they made huge impacts. Kansas State, for example, the Ethan Burke strip sack, Baron Sorrell, oh. uh, one of the tackles at the yeah. very end there. Uh, you know, there were a couple games where I would have given them an A minus or an A even. Uh, but overall, I felt like they lacked the big playability. Some other defensive ends might have. Now, mm-hmm. maybe next year, both of those guys, one will be a senior, one will be a junior. So it might be their time to step up a year from now. All right, linebacker, Jalen Ford. You know, people don't know this, and I mentioned this to you uh, right after the game because I I hadn't said it all year. Jalen Ford's been dealing with a hernia injury since OU. So people don't realize what some of these guys go through when they try to just, you know, patch it up and get going. That gives you a sense of exactly what was going on, yet he's still giving up what had 700-plus snaps or something like that for the Longhorns this year. At the linebacker position, Um, uh, two interceptions, uh, did not hit the 100 tackle mark, I don't think. And My take on this is he had a better year last year, probably a more uh, big play year. But I thought this year, Rod, he was much more of a vocal leader on defense. And I think he was the glue of the defense. I really do. Yeah. When, um, you know, he was asked, you know, why you didn't leave after last year? You had a. Great year. You had a splash year. NFL scouts, the kind of, you know, they started looking at Jalen Ford, watching film because he had one of those years with a ton of splash plays. And to your point about him being a leader, he said he didn't want to leave like the, the program like that. He wanted to leave where, where he thought he left the program in a good place, where he was playing well, but also the program was was in a place where he thought it was going to ascend. And I guess after he had that great campaign, he didn't believe the program was in a good place. He didn't feel confident that he left it in the best possible situation he could. So he said, I came back. And he didn't say he came back for anything about himself selfishly, about his own skill set to improve, anything like that. Because, I mean, honestly, I don't know how much better he got from last season, this season. But like you said, he was a better leader because he asserted himself. And that was the reason he came back was to be a better leader. Remember that Marvin Overshone was the leader at that time when he had that breakout campaign. That was Demo. He wanted to come back. And I remember feeling like this is a DB. I w- I couldn't wait till the DB room was my DB room. It was Quentin Jammers at one point, And my man, uh, Ahmad Brooks was there. It was his and Greg Brown, the guys in front of me. And I couldn't wait. I was like, okay, so if I, if I am the, you know, veteran starter in this room, then they look to me as leader. It's going to be my DB room and we'll run it like Robbie wants to run it. It'll play. They'll play to the standard that I set. And I couldn't wait for that. And I think Jamie Ford felt the same way that now I can't wait for that linebacker room to be my linebacker room. I walk in, Hey man, we live in early. We're going to watch film doing this. Y'all ready? Let's go. We stay in later doing this when you set the standard. I think he looked forward to that. So I'm going to go just with the linebackers. Uh, I went with a B plus to A minus. I was right there in that category because there were some plays. I mean, David Bender, uh, I love Bender. I love his story. I thought he was great, uh, but he was susceptible in coverage at times. Um, I thought at times because Jalen Ford makes sense about the hernia. I thought he at times under underwhelmed, but now I know why in certain games, I thought teams with tempo, 
uh, with some of the crossing routes we saw over and over again that the linebackers were supposed to be there for to give inside help. I just thought there was just some subtle nuances of the game that uh, the linebackers uh, just uh, uh, they just failed to execute at times. And uh, I thought it was from last season. Um, I, I thought it was a bit of a drop off from last year's production at linebacker. But you had Demo and Jalen Ford with one of the greatest seasons in the history of the conference for a defensive player. Didn't win the defensive player of the award. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with a, you know, I said A minus to B plus. I'm somewhere in that range. I'm not really sure. I'm going to go B plus. I, I'll, yeah. I'll go B plus as well. I would add that we're, we're not even, we neglected to mention Anthony Hill. Um, yes. who added a spice to that room uh, from the get-go, especially against Alabama. But uh, even later in the year, I mean, he continued to get more and more reps. Uh, Maurice Blackwell was that dime linebacker that they like mm-hmm. to use a lot. Um, so I, I feel like it was versatile uh, and effective. I think I like it that. wasn't perfect, to your point, especially against those crossing routes. Probably if you had to pin an F on anything, Throughout that year, it was that and letting Bill and Gabriel run uh, against yeah. OU, right? But other yeah. than that, I, I thought that the the linebacker unit really had a, a good season. Not the best season, to your point, but a good season. All right, DBs. Boy, this one's going to be tough for you, Rod. You're a DB. Uh, Longhorns, perhaps because teams had to focus so much on throwing the ball, they really got pinpointed and picked on. Um, almost all year because teams couldn't throw against Murphy and Sweat. And so they were the offenses were one-sided decidedly, right? They 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 knew what they were gonna go attack at tech against Texas. I mean, some of them just totally eschewing the pass or eschewing the run game altogether. Uh, yep. I, I gave the the defensive secondary a C. I, I did not think it was a 10 game, nine game worthy secondary. I thought it was a seven six, seven, eight game wins mm. secondary, kind of in my opinion. What what did you think? Uh, you got the same grade I did. I, I At first, I grade them individually, cornerbacks and safeties, uh, but then I went C plus and C, so I'll end up with just a C grade for them. The only reason the cornerbacks ended up above a C or C plus was because of Jaday Barron. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and honestly, I liked the, a young Malik Muhammad. Um, I liked his growth. I thought he, by the end of the year, was playing much better. Hell, he's he's one of the people that got his hands on the football in that game versus Washington. At least he got close to making a play. So I, I liked the development of some of the young corners. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most for the most part, uh, even Ryan Watts as, as a cornerback, uh, the safeties, all of them, they were liabilities in coverage. So I'll go see. I mean, Texas gave up so many explosive plays. You look at twenty plus yard plays allowed. Uh, Texas was tied for one hundred eighth in the country. Look at 30 plus yard plays allowed. Texas was tied for 112th. Uh, 40 plus yard plays allowed. Texas was tied for 106th. Uh, I mean, I don't even know why teams bothered running against Texas. I would have just came in throwing the football. And when teams became pass first, as you mentioned, even when Texas was up 20, 21 points, teams were still able to gash Texas. And we saw ultimately the game, the last game of the season ended. Uh, getting the Texas secondary eviscerated by the best, best passing offense in the country. But still, Texas could not hold up in coverage. They understand that, though. That's why they're recruiting five DBs in, in this latest recruiting class, bringing in McCoubin the transfer portal. So I wouldn't freak out about it. It's just one of the last areas of roster construction uh, for Sark and the defensive staff. So I'll go see with that group. All right. Uh, we're going to do defense overall now. And then next, after that, we'll do special teams. Let's start with defense overall, Rod. In, in some games, this defense carried the Longhorns. They helped close out the games against Kansas State and Houston. Um, they uh, were immovable objects in the run game. So if you ran the ball, you just had a, I mean, for example, I mean, Kansas was a game that other than the option, Kansas had to throw the ball or they weren't, they weren't getting anything in the run game. And that's a good running team. Oh, uh, you couldn't run the ball except for its quarterback. Mm-hmm. They made teams one dimensional. And there is something to say about that. I mean, because the minute you do that, then an, an interception here, or a turnover there, and I go back to the Iowa State game, maybe, where they just suffocated Iowa State. Yep. Um, and I, I, I have to give the, D, the B overall. I gave them probably a better grade than the sum of their parts. So you see what I'm saying? Like, whereas the yeah. offense, I, I did the opposite. I thought individually they were better. They just lacked some rhythm at time. The defense, I would go a B, B-plus for them right now. 
What 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 do you think? I gave a B plus. Okay. The reason I gave a B plus, I think the secondary drags down the grade. I think your front seven was one of the best in the country, and we and even looking at uh, the, the edges being young, not providing enough splash plays. From those edges, as you talked about, you want more of those linebackers. You had a slight drop off in, I think, the productivity and effectiveness of linebackers. Your report about Jalen Ford and the hernia. That's why I that's why I kind of upped their grade a little bit. I was like, oh, with that in mind, a lot of things make more sense. So I'll I'll be a little bit more lenient uh, with my grade there. Uh, but I'll go with a B plus. I just think the secondary and coverage overall, because even the linebackers were a big part of that, the coverage issues that dragged it down and the pressure. Now, Texas got a lot of pressures last year. They were top five in the country, actually in pressures in power, by a power five team. But I don't think enough of those translated into sacks. They ended up getting um, 39 sacks, which is pretty good. I mean, I'm, I mean, sorry, they were 39th in sacks. They're 32 sacks on the season, which is pretty good. Um, but there were opportunities for more sacks. Think about how many sacks they missed in the Bama game. Sacks missed in the, in the Washington game. There were sacks that were missed by this team, and they could have happened at crucial moments. So I think B plus, but they, I'm with you. I, I think ultimately the defense, had, they did better because they did better than their overall sum of their parts just because the secondary was dragging them down, man. And I, like I said, I'm a secondary guy, but the secondary underperformed this season. Got it. All right, special teams. Special teams. Uh, look, Ryan Sanborn, what a great pickup in the portal. Yep. Burt Auburn, 29 of 35, Rod. That's just ridiculous. That, that amount of field goal attempts in a college uh, a college year. Um, and they returned a kickoff for a touchdown. They returned a punt for a touchdown. They absolutely smothered teams on kick, on kick and punt returns for the most part. Was it as good a special teams performance as you can remember? Maybe they got a kick block or punt blocked against uh, Kansas State. Um, you know, maybe Houston ran out a kick from the end zone pretty good. Yeah. But literally, uh, I have a hard time saying Texas didn't win just about every battle at special teams that they had throughout the year. They had to be one of the best special teams unit in the country. Coverage units were great, too. You had two of the best gunners in the country for most of the year with Keaton Crawford and Keelan Robinson. Um, so can't, and the coverage units are getting better as the recruiting classes get better because you've got yeah. better athletes out there. Uh, and I'm with you. I'll give you a Xavier Worthy punt return stat. He uh, led the country in 20 plus yard punt returns, uh, or basically 20 those plays from scrimmage. Uh, and, and and he's tied for the most 30 plus yard returns uh, for in, in punt returns. So I mean, he was a weapon. We've heard Mike Gundy bring up the fact that Xavier Worthy as a punt returner was something that he was worried about. He brought that up uh, unsolicited. It was like, hey man, we worried about this guy Xavier Worthy on the punt returns. And I think Xavier Worthy, who, the most remarkable, remarkable thing about Xavier Worthy in punt returns is he admitted he didn't return him in high school. He ends up being one of the best returners in the country. And his first time returning punts is in college. Uh, I think Jeff Banks is one of the best special teams coaches in the country. We don't give him enough credit. He's been at the most consistent phase of the game since he got here. Offense struggled at first, but now they found their way. Uh, defense had their struggles, but now the defense has found its way. Uh, but special teams has not really struggled on the Ford Acres. From year one to year three, Jeff Banks has had that group uh, you know, pretty consistent and playing at a really high level. So I'll give him a lot of credit. But, yeah, I'll give these special teams overall an A. I got an A for that group. Hey, what was it that uh, Mike Gundy said? Uh, Texas had, going into the Big 12 championship, Texas yeah. had plus 300 yards over its opponents in special teams. It was like punt return differential is what he was looking at. Yeah, it was just something yeah. absurd that you're just like, yeah. wow, that's, you know, that's that's big time stuff. Brian Irwin uh, mentioned that in the preseason. Hey, where do we want to be? And let's grade it off of where a national championship level is at. Mm -hmm. And that kind of special teams performance is exactly that. I will yeah. add this. You know, a couple of interesting things to me. One, for whatever reason, Texas opponents were great kicking the ball this year. I, I, I don't know if I, I mentioned this, but opponents were 19 of 22 on field goals versus Texas. That's wow. 87 percent. So 19 of 22. Right. That's that's mm -hmm. kind of crazy good. <laughs> that's OK, okay that's interesting. Is it Texas's kicker was 29 to 35, which is a lower percentage than that. And was all all uh, all Big Twelve. So, is it possible because the red zone defense is so good they ended up with shorter kicks, chippy field goals? Maybe. Yeah, that could be that could be a heavy piece of it, Rod. Good thinking there. 
Uh, but I want to mention that. And I also uh, wanted to mention Joe D. Camillus and oh, his, yeah. his uh, impact because you mentioned um, you mentioned Jeff Banks. I think he's terri terrific like you. Joe D. Camillus, I think, did some stuff in the return game that really helped. Um, and uh, that as a whole was outstanding. I also want to say Joe D. Camillus gets like one of the Warrior Awards. He got hit while riding his bicycle mid-season after Ooh. practice and literally ended up in the hospital. And one of the games, you could literally see him, he had shoulder surgery. He's on the sideline for the next game. He didn't miss a game. So he had like shoulder surgery on Wednesday. He's on the sideline on Saturday. So oh. <laughs> like serious shoulder surgery. So uh, wow. you know, if you're going to win – Coaches, uh, coaches got to live what they, you know, live what they you speak. Got to it out, baby. You got, yeah, everybody's got to be tough. It, it, everybody. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, man. That's going to do it. Uh, what did you give from for special teams overall? Uh, I gave them an A overall. I thought punt return was an A plus. I thought kickoff return, uh, punt punt coverage also. I thought was excellent for Texas. I thought kickoff return was excellent. Kick coverage was excellent. I gave them A's. I gave the punter uh, an A. I gave the kicker an A. He's an all Big 12 kicker. Yeah, yeah. So I wave A's all around for the special I, teams. I think they're great. I think they were, to your point, they were, they may have been the most consistent unit throughout the whole year. May yeah. have been the most, not just not just the last three years, but this whole year. They were pretty much, they pretty much won every battle they played in this year. Uh, I agree with that. All right, all right, that's going to do it, Rod, for the defense. Uh, thanks for doing it. That's the 2023 re-rank of uh, the grades for the team. I appreciate your time, Rod, and appreciate yeah. everybody watching and listening. I hope everybody has a good Sunday afternoon, a good Sunday, uh, and the rest of the weekend. For Rod Babers, I'm Bobby Burton. Hook them. Hook them.